Oh, hi. This week, I'm gonna do one of two free shorts patterns. I'll link to where I found them in the description. I've never used patterns from Mood Society before, so let's see how this goes. I think they're put together by fashion students or something. I'm not really sure, but very neat to have free patterns, especially because I don't know if y'all have been to Mood Fabrics in New York City, but Jesus Christ, it's so fucking expensive. <laughs> the little bit of Project Runway that I have watched, whatever budget they're getting is not realistically enough to buy almost anything in that store. <laughs> I've heard they have good prices online, so maybe just the stuff that I have found. Ugh. I just had a tick on my leg and now I'm like, I feel them everywhere. Anyway, I know a couple people that shop their online store a lot, so I haven't actually looked at that to see what the price differences are because I'm desperately trying to get through my own fabric stash and I've already fallen victim to seeing things that I need very badly in person. I don't need to add an online fabric shopping experience to the mix. Not just yet, at least. Also, let me know where you buy fabric online if you buy online. I need to touch stuff before deciding, but I guess if I know... Oh, it's a Joann's Quilting Cotton or a Kona fabric because I know specifically what those feel like already. I could probably handle buying those online, but in general, it is not my favorite thing to do. I gotta get my grubby mitts on everything before I purchase. Anyways, like I said, I printed, assembled, which always takes forever with PDFs, and then cut out two different patterns. I did the eucalyptus shorts, which is gonna be what we're doing today, and then the myrtle shorts, which have pleats in the front. I'm excited to tackle those next, but one thing at a time. For starters, if you recognize this fabric, it's because I hacked up my flamingo dress, and I'm sorry if you liked that dress. I just never wore it, and I had cut out pockets to add to it, and I couldn't get myself to do that either, and I was wondering why I wasn't wearing it, and when I tried it on, I just wasn't feeling it anymore. There were tweaks I wanted to make, and I just don't think that that type of fabric is what I want for that wrap top elastic waisted skirt dress situation. Thankfully, between the dress and the leftover flamingo fabric that I had actually forgotten about until I did my swatch card video a couple weeks ago, where I went through almost all of my fabric, I still haven't tackled the fleece or flannel. Ugh soon. I'm gonna do it soon. But I measured out and made little note cards for each and every one of the fabrics that I have a significant amount of. I have bins full of small scraps and that feels like too much to catalog, but I do have it separated by type of fabric. So there's like knits, flannels, and wools. There's whole ass garments that I've thrifted and haven't used or like most of a garment that I have thrifted and haven't used or stopped wearing. So at least I know where to sort through when I'm looking for stuff. But bless these swatch cards because otherwise I probably would have just gone with some of the flannel that I have, which I don't think would have given me the same type of realistic information as the quilting cotton, because I will probably make shorts out of a quilting cotton or something like that weight, where I'm not gonna wear flannel shorts around, especially in the summertime. Absolutely not. I need shit that can breathe. Maybe even some denim. I do still have a boatload of denim and I do like wearing denim shorts. So because I wasn't working with a ton of yardage and mostly scraps for this, I did have to get creative with some of the color blocking for the waistbands and the pockets. Another bug just hit my leg. Where did you come from? We are getting into warm weather folks and I hate it. So I was trying desperately to not have to cut anything out upside down, but there was one panel and of course it was a front panel. But I have to say when I was outside just now filming the final clips, the pattern is busy enough that I didn't even notice. And listen, if shit like that is regularly passable in fast fashion products, I think it's going to be okay for a wearable mock-up that I'm putting together to test out a pattern. Not that I think Forever 21 quality garments is the bar I want to be setting for myself, but I don't need to be so incredibly harsh on my own projects when those motherfuckers sell that shit. Oh, I just got very mad and we don't need to go down that road. So let's not do that today. I'm already too tired. I did realize doing this project that using this fancy new notcher that I was gifted by my fairy god Cheryl, who also gifted me the invisible zipper foot I'm going to be using later in the video that I haven't used since I was gifted it, which was probably a year and a half ago. So we got there finally, eventually. <laughs> Have I mentioned how out of sight, out of mind I am with everything? Anyway, this notcher, when you hold it so that the like sharp part is on the underside, you can actually see the lines on the pattern through that little gap along the bottom. Much like when you're using a hole punch, you can kind of see like the underside of what you're punching through and sometimes that can help guide you. I don't know, probably insignificant, but it was nice to have it like exactly on the spot that I needed it instead of trying to guess. Okay, and this is really stupid, but one of the pattern pieces, I think it's actually for the other pair of shorts. Rather than saying cut to a fabric, 
cut on fold, cut mirrored pieces. It said cut face to face. It made me laugh every time I saw it because it just made me think of the My Brother, My Brother and Me live shows because that's what they titled the podcast episodes. And speaking of, I hope some of you are fans of Mabim Bam and it's not just me because I did send out some mail time perks related to that particular podcast and one of my absolute favorite bits, which I'll actually put in the description. So if you got one of the Shrimp Heaven Now prints, excuse me, I said that with the wrong inflection. Shrimp Heaven Now. And you don't know what the fuck that's a reference to. There's a great animatic that someone made of the bit from the podcast. I mean, also, if you didn't get one of the prints and are like, what is shrimp heaven? You can have a minute or two of giggles along with me. And maybe it's not everyone's sense of humor, but they, they hit me right in the giggle dick. Okay, anyways, once I had all the fabric cut out and marked, I did also have to get interfacing for two of these waistband pieces. These are the only bits I had to cut out of a different material. I, I just didn't quite have enough, but also it's completely hidden out of the way, so I figured just using some white cotton that I had laying around would get the job done. Once that was ironed on, all of my prep work was done, other than switching the thread on my serger. I can definitely tell that I am doing better just in life in general now that I am properly medicated because because I will regularly change the serger thread color when it's called for in a project and like make sure I have the right thread in the machine instead of just using whatever's on there already where I would either not do the project because I didn't want to change the serger thread color or I just wouldn't and I'd use something that absolutely didn't match. I actually got really upset looking at a cosplay I did last year that I was gonna wear for free comic book day. I didn't end up going out that day, but I used white serger thread on black fabric and it was barely folded over once. So like it's, it's pretty visible in some spots and it makes me so mad, but I don't have enough of that material to remake it. So part of me just wants to remake the whole costume. And it was just me being a real lazy prick about it. Looking back, I regret not taking the extra couple minutes to do it, but thankfully it does feel a lot less overwhelming to do little things like that where it just, it felt so, impossible to get done before and I'm just I'm very thankful that I get to do better work now because of my brain being in a better place. Okay so the reason I'm doing these shorts first instead of the other ones that I cut out is because these ones have pockets. Now I'm thinking I'm gonna put side pockets into the other ones that I made because I cut side seam pockets out for the original flamingo dress I had so the fabric's just laying there on my cutting table right now like staring at me being like please put me in something. So I think I'm gonna add those to the other shorts because those did not come with pockets. But for these, I was very excited about doing these pockets because I wasn't sure how it was gonna go down because there was one pocket piece where normally when I've made pockets for things, there's at least two pieces to make the pocket bag. And yeah, I just, I didn't know how the magic was gonna happen. I stitched the pocket along this angled edge of the front pattern piece. And cause it has a bit of a curve to it, I did notch it and then I pressed it. And then I like when there's top stitching on the edge of a pocket like this, it just helps it hold its shape better and not like fold in on itself. It's also gonna keep that line a little more crisp. And it was gonna completely hide the seam allowance because I was serging everything else. The pattern did call for French seams, but I had already changed all of my surgery thread, so I wanted to make it worthwhile. So I just kept the seam allowance the same that the pattern called for. But anyway, this top stitching I did hid the seam allowance, so I didn't end up serging that particular edge. But I did stitch and serge everything else. So then I was like, uh huh, the pocket piece is extended past the center front of the shorts. This is weird. Did I mess something up? And like none of the notches were lining up and I just didn't understand what was happening. Then, you know, reading the instructions, I realized, oh, you fold the pocket piece in half and that finishes the side seam of the shorts, like extends this bit. So you have a full piece here and your hip bones aren't poking out because there's a, a gap in the fabric here and you just have to stitch across the bottom. And it's just a lot less work than any other pocket I've made. Like I would prefer doing this than side seam pockets every single time. Definitely gonna add this to my repertoire of like skirt pockets and stuff as well. Something that doesn't have gathers, like a nice A-line skirt or something like that this would be choice. So yes, I stitched across the bottom of the pocket and then I pinned it in a couple spots because now the notches are lining up where they need to be. Then I attached the front pieces together at the rise is what it's called. The part that goes from your waist to your crotch and then likewise the backside is from the small of your back to your crotch. I stitched 
both of those seams together. Then I had a full front panel and a full back panel. I don't know if this is called flat felling or not when it's just stitching the seam allowance to one side. There must be a term for it and I don't think that's the one, but it gives the same look from the outside as a flat felled seam. And I figured the more durable these seams are, the better. I also could have used a twin needle for this part and I'm not sure why I put the effort into switching the serger thread color and was all Mm, I'm gonna make this look as good as possible, but then didn't use one of the tools available to me that gives like the most professional finish out of anything else I have other than my iron, I suppose. Especially because this is nice, lightweight, thin fabric. There aren't super bulky seams everywhere, so this is ideal for using a twin needle. I guess because these seams don't have to stretch and a twin needle, you can still stretch a little bit, right? I don't know. I didn't say my decisions made sense. It's just what I did. Okay, so then it was sewing the front to the back at the side seams and the crotch. Now, I didn't read every single word in this paragraph. I don't really love the layout of the instructions. I, I would work really well with like bullet points or something. These are just kind of like vague and fairly nondescript blocks of words. If you are super unfamiliar with sewing patterns and you don't really know what shorts and pants pieces should look like and where stuff should go, I would not recommend doing this pattern. It's not necessarily difficult, but it's not like a step-by-step -step thing. It's just kind of like, I don't know, put this part together and then attach it to this part. It does give the order of things, which is helpful, even though I would change the order just a little bit of how things go together when I absolutely remake these, because I need shorts that fit me, goddammit, because that is almost nothing in my closet right now. Someone was upset that there was filming happening and he wasn't on camera. <laughs> anyway, I'm giving the pattern instruction shit because I messed up and I sewed up both side seams. I both stitched them closed, did the two rows of top stitching, and then surged it, which I then had to unpick. And something I need to be better about is reading through the instructions ahead of time, because then I would have realized that the pattern called for a side zip. I don't fuck with side zips in this house, but it was too late for me to add seam allowance to the back center waistband and make that alteration, so... We did what we had to to get this pattern made. But especially when there's a pocket, don't put side zips in. I hate them so much. Anyway, I unpicked one of the side seams. I picked the left side just because I'm left-hand dominant and the one other thing I've sewn a side zip into has it on that side, so it's where I think to go. I don't know if there's a standard for which side, like there is with a button placket. Once that was unpicked, I searched those edges separately and then I put in an invisible zip. I think I've only done one or two of these before. They aren't overly complicated. It feels like there's extra steps because you gotta press them beforehand. You basically have to like unfold it, press it open so that the coil is laying flat and not folding over against the tape. Then you stitch it in and then it folds in on itself. The invisible zip I used I took out of some other dress I'd had for a long time that also had a side zip that I hated. So it was probably not in its best shape and it didn't have as much recall because it's pretty hidden, but I would not say invisible. So yeah, maybe user error, maybe it's just a worn out invisible zipper. Once it was pressed out, which like I often have to press zippers to start with anyway because there's like creases from them being folded in the little like package you buy them in. So is it really that much extra work to prep it? I don't think so. It just feels like an extra step. It is certainly more time consuming and there's more rows of stitching involved when I am putting in a regular zipper and I always thought invisible zippers were more work, but alas, they are not. And I'm glad this reminded me of it and I am going to keep practicing to really get the hang of it because the, it's so quick. It's so quick and I can't believe I am saying this, but I, I am becoming more on board with invisible zippers than I ever thought I would be. Anyway, once it was pressed out, you do stitch it down like right sides together. So then I took my invisible zipper foot. It has these two little grooves underneath and those kind of keep that coil of teeth like unfolded so you can stitch like right next to it. And then once I stitched down one side, I closed the zipper, lined up just one spot where the waistband attached. Oh, also I attached the waistband before I started inserting the zipper, just the front part of the waistband. So anyway, stitched up the second side of the zip. Once I had that part marked, it closed up beautifully. Then I just restitched the bottom part of that seam until it met the bottom of the zipper. Got that to lay nice and smooth. And then I attached the waistband facing. So like the inner layer, that interfaced layer of the waistband, attached that to the top of the front waistband. I do like how this waistband tapers towards the waist. So it's like smaller at the top. I think I need a bigger angle to this. Like I need a more drastic difference between the top and the bottom of the waistband because I don't want it way more tight around my actual hip, but I do 
do want the actual waist to be smaller. So I got to noodle around with that a little bit more. And once your invisible zipper is inserted and you zip it up, it just kind of like folds the fabric over itself and that's how it, it hides. It's like when you have a blanket around yourself and you like pull the edges in front of you and you just want to hide away from the world. It's kind of like that. It's just tucking itself in for a nice little nap. So I just pressed the seam allowance of the two waistband pieces towards the facing side. So pushed it up and then folded it over. I did top stitch that just to keep a nice line. I don't actually love how this ended up looking, so I'm not going to do that next time. I'm just going to press it really well and probably understitch. And also take care to make sure that the top tails of my zipper are fully tucked in because they're sticking out just a little bit too much for my liking and it's making it also look a little uneven. Then the very last step was doing a little stitch in the ditch to tuck the waistband facing in place underneath and so no stitches for that were showing from the front. Then I tried them on and I wasn't super in love with how the fit was and I was gonna leave it for the night and decide what to do with it the next day but then got a second wind and was like no we're gonna finish this tonight. So I wanted to take the shorts in more and I didn't want to fuck with the zipper side or the pockets so I didn't mess with the side seams though when I alter the pattern I will take some width off of the pieces at the side seams. So I folded from the top of the waistband in the front so that there was almost like a a half inch pleat that took up a total of one inch of the width and I just like folded that under the entire garment up to the back and the top of the waistband on that side. So I took a total of two inches off of the waist. Still not enough, but it looks a lot better and it's actually like staying up on my body where they were just gonna fall off before. And then I surged and folded up the bottom hem of the leg holes and the shorts were finished. This was actually a really super easy make and as with every pattern now that I've gone through it once it's going to go together a lot quicker next time and I can make the alterations that I need to where so much of it is if there's a slightly different shape piece that I'm not used to using just trying to make sense of where the hell it goes but this one was super straightforward and there's no fly front zip or buttons going on anywhere I did actually find this pretty easy to put together and yeah I'm glad I tackled the invisible zip for this one because it, it was much easier than I remembered it being ahoy oh well, I didn't mean to I'm not I didn't say it just because I have this shirt on. I promise I'm not pretending to be a pirate. Though, there are things in the works. <laughs> That's not what I'm here to talk about, though. A couple days after I finished the flamingo shorts, I did the thing I said I was going to do and had enough time to add this into the video. So I made another pair of shorts. I actually basically took the flamingo ones apart. I think I had to take in a total of seven plus inches off of the original pattern, which like I took my measurements right before I picked what pattern size I was going to go with. So it's not like I misjudged what size I needed because I just guessed at my number. Like I had just measured myself and I know ease is a thing, but dang. Anyway, it was a free pattern. I still learned a lot from doing this. It's fine. But I unpicked a lot of the shorts and then I did this like pleat on all four panels, much like how I did the one that's hard to show you. Oh, because I'm not even showing you the right size. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so the first alteration I did, I, I folded over the center seam and went like under the crotch and around to the other side. So that was taking in a total of two inches from the waistband. So I took the waistband apart so I could like lift the whole thing up. So all layers were accessible. I undid the center seam one because it was just loosely top stitched down. Then from all four panels, I did a similar tuck that was a half inch wide. That was folded over, so taking in an inch total on all four of the panels. That got me a lot closer. And for some reason, I unpicked the entire zipper. I didn't really need to do that. So when I went to try these on again, I just kind of like loosely basted myself back into them just to get a proper look at the fit. And then I made these. There we go. So as you can see, I did actually hem these. I did a round of serging and then folded them up. And yes, I intentionally left the serging color red because one of the first denim garments I ever owned had red serging on the inside and this just made me think of it and like I always really liked how that looked so I kept it. It's fine. Even though all the other stitching is black, it's fine. <laughs> I did add a center back zip and I just completely reshaped the waistband here. I cut it down at a curve like this so that's why it has a little bit more of a shape there where it was already angled but it's like it's curved and I actually really like this line that's happening here. I like this. I don't mind that it goes out a bit, like my hips don't come out quite quite this far, but the full effect of these things is uh, feel a little bit tweedledee tweedledum. And the legs are so wide that I'm genuinely worried about like flashing someone if I crouch down. So 
they do not work for me. I am considering just cutting the crotch seam apart that's separating the legs and just making it into a skirt because the legs are so wide I don't even think I would need that weird like triangular panel that a lot of denim pants turned skirts have. I could just make it look like a skirt. So I'm gonna sit on these for a little bit. I mean I'm literally sitting on them and they're, they're pretty comfortable. As with everything denim it gets more comfortable the more you wear it because it's like getting worked in. So sitting is actually comfortable and apologies for this angle but there is so much happening here that I'm not a huge fan of. Also I did cut the pattern down half an inch on every side. I took everything in so much and then I still had to take in another three plus inches. I did cut the back waistband in half on both layers and because there's not normally a seam in the middle there I did add a half inch to either side but that got eaten up by the invisible zipper which I'm very proud of the insertion I did on this considering this is my third one I've ever done. Maybe fourth? Maybe fourth. So yeah just wanted to give this little update that I did in fact put in more work and noodled around with the pattern some more. Let me know your thoughts on the cut of these shorts if it's just that it's a new style to me and that's why I'm not like super on board with the look of them and your thoughts on me turning it into a skirt. I would love to actually keep the turned up hem because I haven't seen a denim skirt with that effect like the way you cuff denim shorts. Anyways back to whatever past me was talking about. Overall especially for a free pattern this was really fun. I learned a new pocket technique. I got reacquainted with invisible zippers. Really, really like the shape of this waistband, so I'm gonna mess around with it a little bit more and like maybe make this more of my default waistband shape instead of just the rectangle because I, I don't love how that sits on like my gathered skirts and stuff, especially when they're taller because there's no way for it to not gape at the top because my body narrows as you get towards the waist coming up from the hip. But yeah, I really liked doing this project and it's super cool that such a well-known fabric store is helping just everyday people sew their own wardrobes and learn some stuff. This is really cool. Also why I feel bad complaining about any of the instructions because this didn't cost anything. Someone put their time and effort and skills into this to share with the world and there's no need to be harping on them for things. And also it's just how I learn stuff. It's a different style than their instruction style if that makes sense. And that's not anybody's fault. It's just a different way my brain works. I figured it out in the end. And Bert and I got to take the time to make these shorts and print off these patterns and spend forever taping them together and then cutting out our size. Can you picture him in his own tiny little flamingo shorts? Oh my god. We got to do all that because of everyone over on Patreon. Y'all are why I get to do this and I am so thankful for that. And I hope those of you that got the Shrimp Heaven Now prints like them got at least a little chuckle or even if it was mostly confusion hopefully the video I linked to will help explain it. Later today I'm gonna start tackling the other pair of shorts so stay tuned for those if you're interested. They do have pleats in the front so possibly a little bit more flattering of a shape and I haven't done anything with pleats since I made that skirt at the beginning of this year when I was like we're overcoming this fear so this will also be a good project just to freshen up my skills. I'm pretty excited to see how those go together. I think they're gonna be really cute. I think that's gonna do it for me and the little guy. He's getting antsy so I think we're gonna go for another walk before it gets too hot out and we will see you back here with another video next Friday. Thank you so much for hanging out. Is this ASMR? Am I doing it? <laughs>